if you could tell your novice self 18 years ago one thing about SEO, what would that be? Because I think for most of our audience and our listeners, they consider themselves to be a novices in this area. So what, what would you tell your younger self? Um, I think the one thing that really still irritates me right now is the first five years of my SEO career, I listened to those so-called gurus who were spouting so much information um, that, that led me in a wild goose chase basically for you know four or five years. Um, I didn't really do my own testing. I was hoping what that guy said was gospel and, and it would work very well for me. And I didn't take that action because I just assumed as a young guy that everyone told the truth. And obviously, as you grow up, you realize that people are salesy, people are saying things to mislead you, people are just making things up as they go along. So do your own testing. Don't just listen to what a guy says. The same thing you're kind of saying, in my opinion, holds true to if you're doing sales, if you're doing public speaking, whatever you're doing, is to listen to what Craig does, listen to what maybe I do, listen to what Paul does, and kind of digest it a little bit and then try it. Because if you don't test or try whatever someone's telling you, how do you know if it ever works for you? You know, you could have probably been a doctor in the time it took me to to learn this basic SEO thing. Um, you know, and, and, and it is fairly basic. A lot of it's common sense, but it's just, you don't know what you don't know. And, and I think, again, many of us have been in it from a young age and they were, were young and naive anyway. So again, you just need to, and we think we know best as well. A bit of ego goes there. You're like, I'm not listening to that guy. You know, I know better. I'm going to do it my way and, and stuff like that. So you need to drop all of that kind of stuff in and just try things out. Now, people that have been massively successful in our industry probably hone down in certain elements within SEO. There's link builders. I've got friends who just do nothing else but link building. I've got friends who do nothing else but auditing. Um, so you really can become an expert in one thing. And I think that's what I would rather use. You know, I don't want a run-of-the-mill guy, I'm, you know, working in my house or whatever it might be. And the same way, I don't want a run-of-the-mill guy working in my website because it's just not going to give me that ROI. What is the growth that you're seeing in your personal brand? And maybe some advice you could give to our listeners about growing their personal brand as well. You need to embrace what is working really well for people out there. And obviously putting yourself out on these types of shows or at conferences or whatever, it's still sales no matter what way you look at it. You're demonstrating your knowledge and you're getting that audience to, to buy into you and building your brand, building authority and trust for what you do really is the next step because the way I see it is there's so many digital marketers out there. Why would someone come to me in Glasgow, for example? Um, you know, and that's where I think you know building a brand, building trust, talking on podcasts, demonstrating that you are actually a guy worth listening to is going to help your business because I've got guys all over the world who come to me saying, I want this, I want that, I want training, I want coaching, I want this. And it's all because of that brand building. But I think fear is what paralyzes people and restrains us. And it's our own perceptions more often than the reality. I've been there, you know, talking on stage and I've, I've had the dry mouth, the, the cold sweats going on. Oh, and there's only 50 people there. I'm like, oh, and I, you know, I'll give you a story. Actually, one of my first ever talks um, I remember standing outside, my, the, the, my body started to sweat really badly because I was so nervous. And uh, I stood outside and my wife was in a hotel along the road. And I was literally that close to just phoning the guy and saying something emergency came up and I had to go away. That close from my first ever speaking gig, I was drenched in sweat. So anyway, somehow I didn't run away. I went down, I was drenched in sweat, really nervous and done an okay talk um but um i had to put my neck out there it really scared me but what i would say is you have to put yourself out of your comfort zone if you want to push up to the next level because we all know what it feels like to step into the vacuum of silence when everybody gets quiet and suddenly you're the only person rowing the boat 
And that can be a scary feeling. I think it doesn't matter if you're doing SEO, if you're a public speaker, if you're a, a, a chef for a restaurant, if you're a plumber, if you're anything, we know and learn one thing around us. But what we learn in school, if we go to school for business, isn't very practical to what we really do from a day-to-day experience and how to run a business. So it takes all, I saw this quote yesterday that says, um, I, am, I make good decisions because of my experience. I have experience from making bad decisions. One of the first ones that I ever done was I built myself into my business rather than working on the business. I built myself into that business and it became a bit of a stress for me. And uh, looking back on it, you know, I should have taken myself out of the business and worked on it and replaced myself in the office. Um, And these are things that you don't know until you actually get out there. And I think a lot of us are not setting out in digital marketing to be businessmen as such. You become good at digital marketing. Before you know it, you're hiring a web guy, a writer, a you know, a PA and an accountant. And before you know it, you've got all these people looking at you and calling you boss and all that stuff. Um, and you're just like, geez, how the hell did that happen? 